In the peaceful town of Pennsylvania, a woman gives birth to a baby through unassisted childbirth. But unfortunately, as soon as that baby is born, the three men who helped in delivering the baby had to bury the baby alive in the field near their house. The next day, a group of boys is playing baseball, when their ball flies to the peacock's property. No boys dare to go and retrieve the ball and instead, they continue with a new one. As they are playing, they accidentally discover a small hand protruding from the ground. In this way, the shallow grave of the baby has been exposed. Fox Mulder and Dana Scully are the FBI agents who have been sent to investigate the case. While they are at the crime site, the local sheriff named Andy Taylor comes to greet them. When they are in that field, the three men from the Peacock household have been watching them the entire time. Mulder asks if he has interrogated the family as they are the nearest habitants living in the area. Taylor provides a brief background story about the Peacock family. After their parents supposedly died in a car accident, three brothers, George Raymond Peacock, 30 years old, Sherman Nathaniel Peacock, 26 years old, and Edmund Creighton Peacock, 42 years old, with deformed features are left. The brothers have been living isolated from the outside world, in the dilapidated house that was built during the Civil War. The house still does not have electricity or a heating system and is deprived of water service. They grow their own food, raise their own pigs, and breed their own cows. Taylor is an old-fashioned guy who wishes things to remain the same as they were in his hometown, but the graveness of the situation requires him to seek help from an external source. This is why Mulder and Dana are called, and Taylor wants to find the one responsible. Mulder and Scully ask to take a look at the body. The town does not have a lab or a morgue, so Taylor has kept the corpse in the fridge. Since he does not want anyone to witness the horrible state of the corpse, he leads the two to the restroom and lets them observe the corpse. Just one glance and Scully can tell that the child has been afflicted by a number of rare birth defects. The presence of dirt in the nose and mouth of the dead body indicates that the child was buried alive, and had suffocated and inhaled the dirt before dying. Scully is empathetic toward the mother who has to go through great misfortune as nature turns cruel to her child. When Mulder asks Scully if her family has a history of genetic abnormalities, she replies no. To uplift her mood, he then advises her to find a man with a strong genetic makeup and settle down. Furthermore, he tries to comfort her by saying that the child is a lost case. Scully suggests that the defects seen in that child are not the result of a single polygenic mating but might have been caused by mutations that date back many generations. She points out that although the boys are cut off from the outer world, they do have the knowledge of inbreeding and people do have natural instincts to reproduce. But as per Taylor, the Peacock family now consists of all male members with no mention of a sister, and their mother has been dead for 10 years now. Scully speculates that there might be kidnapping involved in getting a woman pregnant against her free will. That afternoon, Mulder and Scully pay a visit to the Peacock's house, but the boys are not home. They then notice a white car with no number plate parked outside. The surrounding is not in its best state, with an outgrown lawn and flies hovering over the pig head in the front steps. Before entering the house, they take a look inside with the help of a flashlight from the front door. With the guns in their hands, they enter the house. Inside, they find a pair of scissors on the table covered with blood. Mulder carefully secures it into an evidence bag. The footprints on the floor also match the ones on the field. On top of that, they find a shovel with blood splatter on it. Mulder's plan is for Taylor to get the arrest warrant for the Peacock brothers and put them on APB. Scully also gives her opinion to look for any missing women reports and check the identification number on that car. Mulder is positive that if the mother is alive, the sons will definitely take her with them. They look around the house but find no other soul. But in this darkened room, they fail to notice a pair of eyes watching them. At night, Taylor calls to inform them that he has issued warrants for the Peacock brothers and Deputy Barney Paster is working on the missing person reports. But the cases of abandoned vehicles are too many to look into. After ending the call, Taylor checks on his gun which he has locked away thinking that he might never need to take it out. Later, Taylor could not fall asleep and is in deep thought when his wife comes to get him. As usual, after entering the house, they do not lock the front door. Meanwhile, stuffing the wooden bats into their car and turning on the radio, the Peacock brothers set off in their car. After a while, Taylor rises from the bed to check the source of noise through the window. He sees a white car parked on the lawn. Immediately, he tells his wife to hide under the bed while he plans to get his gun. Before he could reach the room where his gun is, he sees someone walking through the front door, so he returns back to his bedroom. Thankfully, there is a baseball bat behind the door, and with the bat in his hand, he gets into the position and waits for the intruders. The door slowly creaks open. As soon as a man enters the room, he lands several blows on him with the bat. But it does not even leave a scratch mark. 
the other two men enter the room with their own bat and butcher Taylor with it. As a result, the floor is left with blood all over it. The amazing sense of smell in the Peacock brothers is demonstrated when they sniff and can tell the presence of another person in the room. In this way, they find Taylor's wife under the bed and she dies in their hands. After their mission for the night is accomplished, the brothers drive back home. The next morning, Deputy Paster is the first one to find Taylor and his wife's bodies as he has come to give the reports to his supervisor. He is completely shaken by Taylor's death and informs Mulder and Scully about it. After they arrive at Taylor's residency, Paster hands over the document from the Federal Crime Lab to Scully. As she takes a look at the document, she thinks there have been some errors in the DNA test of the infant. For the results to come out like that, the child cells would have had to divide triple fold in cell metaphase. Mulder asks Scully about the chances of each of the Peacock brothers being the father of that child. But that simply is not possible, as only the baby batter of one man can penetrate an ovum. On top of that, a weakening ovum has to come from a Peacock family female member, but there are none left. Mulder thinks of requesting backup from Pittsburgh, but Scully urges him to make the move right then. If there is a woman held captive, then her life is in danger and they can't sit waiting an entire day. Deputy Paster supports Scully's thoughts and volunteers to assist them in this mission. Just then, it dawns on Scully, why would the Peacock brothers attack Taylor, and the sheriff didn't even question them about the baby. If it's about the arrest warrants, Taylor issued it via phone, and unless someone heard them discussing the matter at the Peacock home previously, no one would have known about it. On the other hand, the Peacock brothers also get ready for whatever comes their way. That afternoon, Mulder, Scully, and Paster sneak into the Peacock's property. After making everyone wear the bulletproof vest, Paster takes the lead while Scully and Mulder are on the guard. As Paster gets to the front door and opens it slowly, Scully notices a string attached to the door. Nevertheless, before she could alert him, an axe comes flying and chops his head. And soon, the brothers come to rip his body apart. Now that they know the house is full of traps, they can't hastily break in lest they want to face consequences. Now, if they can't enter the house, they have to lure the boys out. For this, Mulder thinks of a plan and lets loose all the pigs from the pigsty. When the brothers notice that the pigs have escaped, they all come out to gather the pigs. Taking the chance, Mulder and Scully attempt to enter the house through the back door. Similar to the front door, the back door is also set with a trap. They finally break in and asks if anybody is inside. They notice a sound inside, and following it, they reach a room with photographs pasted all over the wall. The photographs are proof of the abnormalities being passed down through generations. Mulder notices two line marks made by the small wheels on the floor. So, he crouches down to look underneath the bed, when he sees a woman strapped on a board. As soon as they come into her sight, the woman starts screaming for them to get away. They pull the board out to reveal a woman with a deformed face and all her limbs amputated. It turns out the woman is Mrs. Peacock, the mother of the three brothers. Scully assumes that Edmund is the brother as well as the father of the other two younger brothers. Mulder sends Scully to convince Mrs. Peacock that only if she cooperates, the brothers can get out without getting hurt. Mrs. Peacock does not seem to be held against her will, instead, it seems like she is having an incestuous relationship with them and inbreeding. She is persistent in not wanting to leave her house and their boys. By the time, the brothers have gathered all the pigs, and now, they sense that someone has broken into their house. Mulder and Scully shoot George repeatedly until he finally dies, while Sherman accidentally falls victim to their own trap as a large spike impales him. However, when they return back to the room, Mrs. Peacock is nowhere to be seen. The eldest son Edmund, has already escaped with his mother. Immediately, Scully notifies the police and highway patrol. She is positive that this time, they will definitely catch them. Somewhere, Mrs. Peacock and Edmund are in the car trunk presumably breeding again. She remembers Sherman and George to be good children, but they have to move on and once again, start a new family, and create a place for the family to call their home. Then, as the story comes to an end, we see Edmund climb out of the trunk and drive away. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.